What's up, YouTube? Eugene here, and I'm joined by my fellow fragrance head, Daniel, who you might have seen on an earlier live stream. He joined us uh, right before lockdown, it seems like, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a while back. But I'm here. I'm here now. I'm, I'm in the apartment. In, in, I'm on the other side of the screen now. So this is interesting. Uh, actually, a funny story, because that night we did the live stream, I had got booted off my own my own show because I lost power and, and Daniel kind of took over for about a good hour and a half or so and and, and really it went quite smooth I would say yeah it was kind of a fun experiment uh, just chatting with you guys I, I got the feeling a lot of whack packers were trying to heckle you but you know you got through it and and everything worked out for the yeah, best so but. This, like, this whole thing is kind of new to me and like so I, you know, I've, I've watched some of the YouTube videos, but there's, I guess, a regular group of people who watch your videos, and you know, and they know you. But like, I, I didn't know who anyone was, so I don't know. Like, anyway, I guess right. there were a bunch of like in jokes or stuff like that, but it was fun. It was fun. Right. So Daniel is a fellow Torontonian who's been in and out of the the perfume scene. You did some retail. I know you had some training with some some brands. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into some first impressions? of things that you haven't smelt before but are excited to do so. Sure. Quickly tell us what background you have in perfume, what your tastes are like, and, and yeah, so, what kind of um, things you I, enjoy wearing. I started this journey maybe like 10 years ago. Um, it's maybe even a bit longer. And, um, and truth be told, I was just kind of looking for a new hobby. Um, I... I was interested in like sword making and you know everyone does that phase and then I was interested in wet shaving this was kind of when that was just coming in okay and um, and I went to a shop in Toronto called Noor that had shaving cream they had Penn Halligan shaving cream and I saw a whole bunch of niche perfumes and I really had no idea what any of this stuff was but I started smelling them and it just changed my mind like what your fragrance was I, I, I had no idea of, yeah. what this was and so I'm not like someone who's like got all these scent memories i just it was it was just a hobby i just i didn't know anything about it and i smelled these things and i smelled philosophos and i was like oh a fig yeah. smell i didn't know you could smell like a fig right. you know like it was just yeah. stuff like that and um and that started the journey and then from there i went on base notes and i was there for like hours a day and i was reading and i was sampling i was going to stores and then i bumped into someone at a store and she was reading the book luca turin's guide while she was smelling perfumes and i was like oh i know i know that guy i've been reading that and and then we got to friends and then you know went to meetups and then i started hosting meetups and then i just started getting samples of everything and buying bottles and i went from like the you know like old spice English leather, you know, like whatever my dad had lying around, like, you know, blue jeans or whatever. Yeah. Uh, still a good fragrance, I, I contend. And um, and then just jumped into it and I was on base notes and I was on all that. And then one day I was walking through a perfume department and one of the guys, I brought a sample of a new release from the line. This was uh, young at, uh, at Holtz. Mall. Yeah, and it was something from New York. It was a Barney's exclusive, um, outrageous. And I gave him a sample and he's like, oh, what's this? And I'm like, oh, this, this is from your line. And he's like, I was like, dude, you, you know so much about this stuff. You should just come work here. We've got a new line coming in, and we need a sales rep. And and I was like, actually, that could be kind of fun. So I, I like quit my corporate job where I usually just sat smelling wow. perfume like okay. all the time. And I was like, let's just do this. And I worked for two years in the fragrance department, and 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 since then I've just kept it up as a hobby. But yeah, I've just I've I've smelled thousands of these things over the years. Okay. And, and um, so yeah. what's what kind of thing what's in your wheelhouse what do you like to wear on a day to day basis yeah so I um, I have a decent rotation I actually just counted the other day I've got I've got a hundred or so retail bottles and about a hundred or so decants um, and I've seen much, his collection yeah. it's very solid yeah um, now I, I, I do like collect in the sense that I'm, I'm really more sort of collecting smells and interesting ideas and you go through phases and, and styles like that I do like you know sort of incense and leather and uh, oud and um, some of the heavier stuff. Um, occasionally, that crosses into a not really wearable territory, and I've learned to like back off a little from there. And then I do have you know vetiver, citrus, wood, floral, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But my home base, I think, tends to be the more sort of fall winter, you know, ambers and uh, resinous stuff, that that kind of thing. So that tends to be what I like. Um, and then um, I also don't really collect houses. I mean, I as much follow perfumers. Or certain like accords, or I'm looking for an interesting take um, on, on how a note's been treated. Um, but I don't really bother with the brand or the packaging or um, the price point. You know, I have stuff that's twenty dollars, and I have stuff that's five, six, seven hundred dollars. Um, 
so I, I really just smell the juice and if I like it and I wear it um, and then then that's what I wear um, so yeah I've, I've been doing it long enough that I think I just sort of just I know what I like and I know what I don't and and I like smelling new things um, like some of these we're gonna smell um, but it's it's I prefer to do this sort of thing or go on the online groups where they've sort of crowdsourced what's interesting because I find going to the stores there's just a lot of stuff there and the odds are just not great that it's going to be perfect or interesting or unusual like i've I've just i smelled a lot of them at this point so you sound like a typical enthusiast that just loves fragrance and and loves smelling new things and that's what we're going to do here um do you want to start anywhere specifically um let's probably start lighter and then go heavier i think um okay that's a good idea so i've talked about these extensively on my channel and and these are all things that you're quite interested in this is oud rosewood have you smelt this yet i haven't i haven't if, if i've smelled any of these it's literally been like a sniff at a store and then it's been okay i'll, I'll follow up on this and, and sort of get to know it a little better i do find with the better houses my assumption is that they have built something that's that's complex or nuanced and worth smelling and i figure if they've spent a year working on it i can give it you know a day um Okay, so oud rosewood. I'm not actually getting much oud to speak of to begin with. Um, I'm getting a dry, spicy, warm kind of wood. I guess that's rosewood, but it smells like a kind of um, like maybe a spice cabinet. I'm getting like you're opening the door of a wooden cabinet, and I'm getting dry spices. Maybe a little bit of like a lipstick kind of um, talc. Yeah, a little bit of balminess. Uh, a little bit of warmth. It's a little bit dry, raspy. Do you get any leather? Um, there might be like an aged leather, like it's an old dry kind of leather. Um, I definitely don't get oud per se. I don't yeah. know if they just added oud because that's like a popular accord right now, or maybe it shows right. up in the dry now. But I'm I'm not I'm not getting. But I've heard um, this compared to other old uh, Dior Privés or or Maison Christian Dior's that it's been compared to. Do you see any resemblance at all? I've had leather oud, um, which is much more honeyed and sweet. So, I don't, so it's nothing like that. Um, I'm not really get. I, I'm not going to call it an oud. I, I think I'm just going to call it a warm, spicy Woody. wood scent. Yeah, yeah. And I get a bit of a bug spray thing. I don't know why, but I, when I sniffed the bottle, I got that. And then when right, I more importantly, do you like it? Do you find it interesting? Do you think it's worthy of, you know, the Christian Dior price tag? Yeah. So my impression right now is it seems a little simple. And I think, and I could be wrong on this, but I feel like, like so many lines, the original line was great, and you know, a couple of duds and a couple of amazing ones, and the newer releases are a lot more hit and miss, and this right. isn't bad. And once they make the name for themselves, they just want to cash in. Yeah, right? like didn't they release like, like haven't you noticed there's several releases now recently, like like one or two a year, like it's been well, it's, much. It more seems like they released a dozen to eighteen at once. That line you know? completely expanded. There right. used to be like a solid core, and then they clearly dropped a few, which everyone went, "No, I love that," and then they added a right. whole stack. So I think it's okay, but if I didn't know it was Dior, and you just said, "What do you think of this?" I'd say it smells competent. It smells simple. I wish it went somewhere other than this. So unless there's a big dry down that's going to change, I, right. I'm. It's it's fine, but I'm not that intrigued by it. I, I feel the same way when I wear it. I'm just like, hmm, I you know, I can't wait to apply something else. It doesn't entertain me. Um, I'm not getting a story of characters. I'm not no. getting unless you tell me there's some big development that happens later. I'm not. Uh, this to me is a base that I would spray and put something else on. It's top like of. almost like there's no cohesion to it. Yeah, there's no story. It's just like okay, it's it's a base nice. accord. Let's move on. I don't want to spend too much time. Yeah. Here's Santal Noir. This is a Middle Eastern exclusive i believe have you smelt this one no also okay santal noir <laughs> yeah okay okay yeah it's dark it's rich it's boozy um also spices but not dry yeah okay i like this this um do yeah this is there's a um yeah there's a richness to this there's a fullness in in the base there i feel like it's much more well rounded and there's a thickness to it um it, to me it's very butch it's a very butch amber yeah i was gonna say something like 
I don't want to say masculine, but it feels chunky. It feels um, much like like Oud Rosewood was much more open. It was like an open wood raw floor, you mm-hmm. know, like freshly sanded yeah. some kind of much wood. more smoother. This is yeah. much more. This is a this chunk. is aggressive. Yeah, this is a big sort of hefty thick of scent that I feel like you got to pull that apart a little and see, see where that's going to go. But yeah, it feels much more like a Middle Eastern kind of perfume. But I, my first impression is, yeah, I like it and I think it's interesting. And I would, this is something I would test and sort of see where that's Would you call goes. it sandalwood? Like Santal implies? Do you get anything warm, creamy, fruity? I find sandalwood usually takes time to develop. You usually the notice it yeah, in the base. Usually and so right now I'm just not getting it. But I... I can see that there's enough in this that there's something going on that this will turn into something. So this, I think, warrants some wearing and, and testing. Okay, let's move but on. But yeah, there's a bit of an exotic feel to it. Purple oud. Yeah, so I, I smelled this once briefly when I was traveling, and um, I've heard stories of like entire, there was a story that I heard about a fake Apple store in China where someone went and returned uh, an Apple computer and it turns out the whole store, even the staff thought they were working for Apple. Like the whole thing was completely fake. So I found that there was a store, there was a Dior store in a, in a um, duty free that was selling this. I like and I was like, going. purple dude. I was like, I, I never heard of that. Is this like some, is it like Tom Ford chocolate? Like, is it, <laughs> I thought it was just like a fake fragrance. And I'm like, I know all, I know all the Dior's. I've never heard of this one. What is this? And she's like, no, it's an exclusive. And I was like, well, when you smell it, it, sound it like could it. smell a little bit fake too, yeah, right? Yeah. Cause it is highly synthetic. Ooh. Okay. So it's firstly, it's big. It, this thing has volume cloud. It's, um, it's sweet and sort of juicy. I can't say any specific kind of berry per se, but there's something kind of like black currant or berry-ish. That's fruity. the first thing that comes to your mind is juicy and, and, and well, fruity. Well, there's like a purple pink thing in there, but there's a sharp, acrid, rich smoke. Like I get a lot like of a spice. Char. Yeah, I get charred. Charred woods. Yeah, yeah but not yeah. like an incense or fireplace kind of wood. Almost like a burnt leather jacket, yeah. Like like a like, sm- like a cigarette, like a cigar that got put out on a leather jacket or something. It's it's scorched. It's it's like burnt hair. I'm getting like a scorched, smoky, acrid, sharp smell with yeah some some fruity, sweet like berry. I, I, I see exactly what you mean. And I think out of the four that we've got here, we've got spice blend. This is the most synthetic and yeah. Yeah. probably the most poorly composed, but yes. also for me the most interesting yeah i would agree with you on that i think actually like usually when i smell like chanel's or dior's They're there's a certain like quality. richness to the composition you, you even expect if you don't... them to be on a higher level yeah like like the rosewood is not exciting but it's well composed it's well made i can smell the quality of the ingredients i can smell the transitions that have been blended this is very um it's not clunky but it's you would just... say it's almost like an amateur yeah, it's almost like a sketch of a perfume. It's like he came in and said, okay, here's like the three it's, or four things shoved together. What do you think about this direction? And then they just didn't clean it up. Right, they, they didn't, didn't finish it. it off. Yep, they didn't yeah, yeah. smoothen they it didn't out. fill in the books. It's just five or six things jumping in different directions. Almost like a Le Labo. Exactly, exactly. I don't find those, yeah, I find them not well calibrated. And so this to me is a little too raw and a little too sharp, but actually kind of an interesting release. It, I don't think it feels like a Dior. No. But somehow, something about it works. I like the spices, the use of woods. No, I like the smell. I just feel like it's not as polished as a Dior. Like when you smell Chanel's or, you know, most Guerlain's, like if, if it's if it's raw, it's meant to be that way. Like they designed it that way. Whereas this to me seems unusual for Dior's aesthetic because the whole aesthetic seems glassy and smooth and polished. And this feels raspy. But it's nice. You it's, like it. I, I like it. I have things like it, so I, I wouldn't jump to get it. But um, yeah, okay. I, it's worth smelling. If you Fair enough. A have you smelt Spice Blend? I don't, I don't think so. I mean... My first impression is actually like lipstick or something. I'm not getting. I just got that too. Like, and I don't remember. I don't. I remember. Yeah, yeah. lipstick. Something. I'm balmy. totally getting a yeah a lipstick. Not quite a lotion, but like a a shampoo kind of thing. Shampoo is bad. That sounds bad. Like yeah. Well, just in that it's like 
clean. It's pal- yeah, it's clean. It's a clean smell. You know what? I think I may have smelled this ages ago, and I think I remember my first impression, which was, why is this called Spice Blend? I think I remember thinking something like, this name doesn't make any sense. But I think it was that same duty free, and I just it, I it's one of those things that needs to develop on skin. And when you do, you notice the spices start. It's got that all spice thing going on. Right now, you got that rum accord. It's like a the bay rum. Mm. Yeah, it's it's herbal. Like that's why I'm saying shampoo. It's it's herbal, but there's like a lipstick kind of floral type thing. As in, yeah, I'm curious to see where this goes if it if it develops the, into spices. The heart is very spicy, and then it dries into this patchouli woody amber dry woody ambers so it's kind of in line with let's say ombre nui i I, I would on a on a ladder i would rate them like this ombre nui spice blend uh mitza and then santal noir they're all that golden powdery um woody ambers with patchouli in the base all large doses now i guess i spice blend i just thought it was going to be more spicy than Blendy, right? Um, yeah, blendy. I, I, I guess, I guess it's gonna dry down into something. But, but yeah, right now, I'm getting, I'm getting, yeah, that sort of, yeah, lipstick, I guess. But okay, interesting, and um, and also the name seems to be kind of a bit of a more masculine name. But the fragrance to me seems actually, right. at least initially in the opening here, a little more of a feminine leaning fragrance. But I don't like what they've done with the marketing with. Uh, a majority of the names to this Maison Christian Dior. They're all kind of, yeah. some are really goofy, like Lucky and uh, Happy Hour. You know, I don't like those at yeah. all. And I think also sometimes the coloring. Purple the Oud, I'm not a fan of the name. Spice yeah. Blend either. You know, it's just too Americanized. Yeah. I like the traditional French names. Right, right. I mean, if they were in French, I think that'd be great. I think like, I thought even French Leather names. Oud was okay. Oudis Fahan was you know they were acceptable yeah yeah but this is on a more juvenile level i find yeah I find, yeah the naming yeah doesn't seem as french it just no. they, they feel yeah clunky okay. so we're going on you want chanel or Guerlain next let's do that leon okay. so th- so this new chanel so and i yes yeah, so you don't even have a bottle because i went to the boutique i went to the boutique and i said oh um do, do you have a le leon and he said uh, is that a, is that a color of a uh, makeup or something you know i said uh, no it's it's i said you're not the fragrance guy right and he's like no no i am the fragrance guy i was like oh you're not the fragrance guy i was like what it's, country it's were you in <laughs> toronto oh okay so it's the right, chanel right, boutique. right right it's the chanel boutique i was like it's, it's okay you don't have to like it you don't i only ask because I, I know you travel quite a bit yeah, but yeah this okay. is le leon the new exclusive yeah le leon de chanel, chanel. Right, and, and so I think I saw your video, but what in, intrigues me is Chanel's line, they've had a lot of florals and a few green things, and they've done that, and they really just have, oh. You haven't smelled this yet, eh? Oh, I like it already. Oh, I like yeah. it already. Okay, and they have, like, you know, Queer de Russe, but that's like an old, old, old French lady, like, totally. classic yeah. leather. Great. And then, oh, I like this already. Yeah, I knew you would. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is good. Okay. So do enthusiasts have something to look forward to? Yeah. Like, I don't know what I'm smelling yet, but I it's exciting and interesting. Dry? Y- yeah. Like, it's... Spicy. It's... it's. I'm getting hints of Coromando as well. Like, like it's, I'm getting patchouli. Yeah. For sure, patchouli. Dry, woody, ambery patchouli. Okay. If you took Le Labo's... Um, um, patchouli, 24. patchouli 24 which is really rough around the edges and raw and gritty and stinky and funky and you gave it the chanel treatment and you cleaned it up and you made it a respectable gentleman that's where this would be to me it's like yeah so coromandel i think goes in a more of like an oriental direction where it's chocolatey and patchouli this to me is a little more of a spicy leathery take on the patchouli so the difference between Coromandel and this to me is Coromandel is very well rounded. It's very yeah, full. Yeah. It's more sandalwood. This is cedar, very sharp, very jagged. Yeah. It's got points to it. It's a little more like raw compared to Coromandel, right. for sure. And I remember yeah. when I had yeah. first smelt this, I said the first thing that came to my mind was, and I'm not sure if you've smelled it from Serge Luton's Borneo. Yeah, I have a bottle, um, and someone was over the other day, and she sprayed it, and then I was sniffing the the, the cards see... the next day, and totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, because because um, 
Coromandel has this like white chocolate thing, but it's not really the same. Um, Borneo it has like a dark, almost like a bitter cocoa. You know when you have cocoa powder, right. and it's not the same as chocolate. Right. It's bitter and it's dry. It's got texture to it. Yeah. Yeah. Te- it's yeah. Like totally tannin-y. dry. Yeah. Right? So this, this has that. There is a bit of like a. There's very Serge Luton esque here. Yeah, totally. And by the way, Coromandel was done by Christopher Sheldrake. Sheldrake, who is the perfumer for Serge Luton. That's right. And I've always contended that if you smell Chanel's line. Coromandel's an, a bit of an outlier because it, it's not really the Chanel. It's like not, you it, smell all these floral, like like it's not the Rus classic traditional Chanel, architecture. But, right. but the rest of Chanel stuff, look at their stuff. It's all like white and beige and yellow and a bit of like green thrown in there. Yeah, Coromandel's like very purple modern. and browns and it's like it's it's heavy and rich and chocolate. Deep and, like Chanel's not known for yeah, sweet or totally, exactly. So I always thought that Sheldrake like did his work kind of and did it in a Chanel way, but it's not like the rest of their line. So I'm intrigued that they dropped something like this in, and I think it, it will fit very well. It totally well, stands out, it. doesn't it? They need it, yeah. It, it almost modernizes Chanel. Yeah. This is rich, and, and yeah, I, I like this. I, I And this will do well for them. So how close to Borneo is it? Because I've smelt Borneo... It's it's been five years since I've smelt it last. Yeah, so I think I think Lutens has a sort of a thick honeyness. I find his fragrances very dense, and um, they do develop, but I find them quite thick, um, and they're quite um, sort of compactly. They're packed. They're tight, so they sort of need time to like slowly yeah, right, open. Right. But they're very um, not monolithic, but they're very they're very heavy concentrations, like stuck together. This feels a little more open than that. Um, but but yeah, actually the smell profile is not terribly dissimilar. Um, I've heard it compared to Shalimar. Yeah. I think even Musk Ravageur. I don't get the Musk Ravageur thing, but actually I, I can see the Shalimar thing. Just the idea of it being kind of smoky the idea, and there's a hint of powder. Maybe not the... I don't see them smelling It's not the same smell. At, at all. But like, it's the same idea of, of yeah. a juxtaposition of a kind of a creamy warmth with right. a smoky sharpness. Sure. And so this is different because it's like patchouli and there's maybe some vanilla in there right. uh, like my first impressions were vanilla hint of like powdery lipstick which i think is a chanel thing and then that kind of raw grainy patchouli but right. but, but nicely cleaned up a little very spicy yeah but yeah I, I i like that and this fits yeah this will do well for, i think will do well for chanel but it's interesting if you're a niche person if you know chanel's line go i would say go check this out because this is a little different for them okay but well done yeah well done i agree Iris Toreffi. Have you smelt this yet? Haven't Guerlain? smelled it. Um, yeah, this line too, by the way, I think like Airlines moved a few of their things around. I, I get confused between the different like collections, but I feel like there's a whole bunch of them in this line. Um, so I just I just haven't delved into it much. Oh yeah, okay. So I get, I totally get the Iris. It's the first thing that hits you, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it? yeah. So I have Iris from Hermes, which I will admit um, I mostly just got because I love the bottle, the blue bottle. I just love the color. Uh, and um, and I have um, Iris Silver Mist from Serge Soutans, um, which I haven't worn extensively, but I just remember smelling it once and just was amazed by it. So I'm not generally an Iris person, but those were impressive. Um, yeah, this is, this is, if you like Iris, this... Um, this is good. It's rooty. It's rubbery. Um, it's fairly cool and cold. I would say. Dry. Yeah, it's dry and it's like um, it's like a cold, dusty stone. Is how I've always thought of like um, sort of a mineral. Like I always felt like iris has a sort of a mineral quality to it. Like it's kind of like a like a, a pebble that you find on the beach or something that's dry and dusty. Yeah, it's good. I mean, as far as irises go, and I think Iris Silver Mist, I think, is a benchmark for many people of, of what good Any iris resemblance is. to Dior Homme? Oh, um, I mean, it's Iris, but, but Dior Homme has taken the Iris and it's warmed it up. I get a lot more Iris from elements. this than in Dior Homme. Yeah, like to, to me, Dior, Dior Homme isn't just Iris. There's a lot warm. of other things going on in there. Yeah, when I think of Iris, I think of it generally as a cold flower. Like, like tuberose yeah. is green and bitter and, and witchy wet. and wet. This to me is always it's a dry, dry floor, dry powdery. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I always picture like green. a cobblestone walkway yeah. and like dry stones, gravel that you're, you know, not, the gravel not, walkway you're yeah. walking on, and like white, some kind of like white flower, yeah. you know, from dry dirt. Yeah. Leather, coffee. Do you get coffee at all? 
not I mean not particularly okay I mean like, like sometimes, you'll say, like sometimes you'll say a note and I'll be like oh there it is okay um, nothing even resembling coffee I think there is a dry hint of sort of a smokiness to it but I don't I'm not getting coffee per se okay to me I get kind of like this roasted coffee like walking into a coffee house and it's got that aura to it yeah I think I think there's a smokiness to I it. get more leather than coffee though hmm but leather is, you know, it's it's a nuance that goes traditionally with iris. And again, like this is on a card, not on skin, right. and it's a like three minute first impression. So maybe it develops, it goes there, it could come out in your skin. I don't, I don't get it, but but I do get that dry dustiness, a bit of the rubberiness. Yeah, um, it's good. I mean, as irises go, I think that's very good. Okay. Yeah, I I, I like it. All right. So next we've got. I've got three from Gucci, and I've got three from Louis Vuitton. All uh, things that I'm really high on, surprisingly. I'm, I've been enjoying these quite a bit. Let's start with Gucci, and this is a Midnight Stroll. Yeah, so I'm excited to smell these. I think when the Gucci ones came out, and also the Louis Vuitton ones, which they look quite similar bottles. Yeah, the bottles look yeah. very similar, but um, I kind of snickered at these, like... Alberto Marias and the packaging, yeah. which is absolutely gorgeous. You know, I would have taken away a little bit of this. Right, uh, so I think that's Gucci. That's Gucci. It's yeah. a little, it's like where Chanel is a little restrained, Gucci is just that little bit extra over the top. It's just a little bit extra, a little uh, Right, sort of but, but the yeah. bottles are like yeah. the, the black liqueur, you know, it's just high quality, really shiny, glossy, and they're heavy. It's strange because the bottle shape itself is actually very simple. It just looks like a little flask or canister. Yeah, it's it's I a think simple design. Inspired by but apothecary bottles and yeah, very done something. You, know, you can see the similarity. Even the caps, you know, I don't I don't know what you would call this. Yeah, it's an unusual shape. Like I thought that was kind of some kind of stopper, and then when I saw it, I was afraid to like pop it open. Or I wasn't. I thought they were splash <laughs> bottles, or I wasn't really sure what the setup. You know, was. so we, they've got two incenses. Let's do this. We're gonna compare yeah. the two incenses. Sure. Nuit de Faux from Louis Vuitton and a Midnight Stroll from Gucci. Instead of doing all the Gucci's, let's compare the incenses. Sure. This was my scent of the day today. A Midnight Stroll. Yeah. Okay. This is my first smelling of this Gucci line. I'm impressed. Now, I don't know what the retail price point is, but yeah, th I'm, I'm impressed. Do you smell bubblegum? Man, um, you know, now that you say it, I... <laughs> um, you don't have to. I, I just smell bubblegum. Um, I don't know. Okay, so I get that it's incense, but um, it feels... Um, I, th I know what you mean. There is an underlying balsamic sweetness to yeah, it. Yeah, like a juiciness to and it. And now that you say bubblegum, I... It's like oh. a great bubble... Uh, there's some kind of juicy... It's almost like a wet vetiver. Yeah, so I was going to say my first impression is is when you smell like Comedy Gautant Avignon, it's dry and it's and it's like, um, like a wet basement. But this is like a wet incense. It's almost dank. Like, it's so like you're to walking... To me, it's dry as hell. Like, oh, do you find it? Yeah. Dry, black churchy uh smoky camp forest almost like standing outside in a right right above a campfire i'm getting something that's like i don't know if i'd call it green but it's almost yeah. like piney, Woody, piney. Cypress. i think it's, yeah, I think exactly. it's Cy cypress is exactly. a wasted no so yeah because for example like i was smelling memoir the other day and i was saying okay this is interesting because it's incense but it's a very green incense and that's not like a common combo so yeah i i like this already and i think it's actually unique and and it smells quality it is of a higher quality, and it is interesting. Yeah. I find it to be one of the ins better incenses that I've come across in my journey. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would say, actually, look, if you have a bunch of incenses, then, like, I don't know, I guess you've got it covered. But if you don't and you're looking for something, this this could be a good place to start. Like, if this was one of the three you had, this is a very good, very competent incense. I like this. I love it. Yeah. My only issue is the base kind of loses me and i lose a little bit of it loses focus because a lot of that sweetness that you say that um that what you refer to as bubble gum to me yeah. it was very balsamic it and that's what i get in the base is a lot of that without it changing or evolving or yeah i i like this so it I kind really... of loses me in the base but the opening okay. to the mid is yeah. absolutely gorgeous yeah, i'm i'm impressed my first impression is i'm impressed yeah 
All right, Nuit de Fou. Nuit de Fou. Uh, Nuit de Fou. Uh, Night, of, uh, Night of Leaves. Have you smelled this? No. All right. I'm excited because I know this is right up your alley. Yeah, this is... That's good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right away I get um, eucalyptus. I get this like rubbery... Uh, yeah, like a like yeah, rubbery eucalyptus thing. A very like, rubbery balsamic. It's it smells like some like exotic plant. Like I smell like I'm in Australia in some like botanical garden, and this is some like exotic shrub or like bush of some sort. Yeah. Also, even more so, green incense. It's a it's um I don't want to say fresh in the sense of like a aquatic or citrus like fre fresh is to the me, wrong word but it, it feels like a green crisp um to me it feels like a a november day out in the woods and the pine incense yeah like from pine trees this reminds me of um bois d'incense from Ar armani that was Dubai. my very first association too and the, the more i wore it the more bois d'incense fell out of mind my very first impression yeah, was that's my first this impression. is a much better composed yeah. more interesting more complex bois d'encens yeah you get the black pepper yeah totally totally it smashes I get it. me in the face yeah totally um and i will say by the way in in defense of something like bois d'encens i think you have to this is one i think we've talked about this subject before i think actually last time i was on the podcast which was uh, or the, the the video here which was um Something you have to remember, like to take a fragrance in the context of when it was made. Right, ten when years, Armani Privé did Privé, no one was doing a private no. line. Those bottles used to be like six, seven hundred dollars originally. There was a very exclusive line. They were very expensive, and Bois uh, Bois de Sens was Giorgio Armani's personal fragrance that right. he made for the line. Yep. Since then, you've got Comme des Garçons with good, competent, but fifty incenses. You know, everyone's doing wood and incense, and so lots of lines have worked that concept. But it's like standing on the shoulders of giants to see further. So. Um, I think this is a, at least a first impression, a great potential update to Bois Sans that I would wear instead. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. fragrance is very good, but it is like 25 years old. Not to take away from Bois. Yeah. I still love it it's to this great. day. And even the Ensemble satin. But a lot but has built on that now. So I think this is a contender for one of the greatest incense-based fragrances ever. I think, yeah, I think this is also, and di these are different. They're very good, but they're different. To me, this is very liturgical, very churchy. Yes, I was gonna say that's why this is came to fresh, mind. outdoorsy uh, tree incense. So sap. Yes, I get a very a yeah. lot of sap, like smoked sap, uh, smoked pine trees, very smoky. But this is smoke from a distance. This is smoke whopping. Close, like, exactly. You're close in the fireplace. Range. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. This is like, like a sensor. That's like a sensor from the inside the church. Yeah. And this is you're walking through a forest where there's been like yeah. a fire. Yeah. And Somebody's it's burning a fire down the yeah. street. Or it's like rained and there was a fire now right. and it's like just put out the fires, but you can still smell the, the burnt like wet wood. Yeah. Yeah. Do so you both. Get the, do you get the different. oud? It might take time to develop. Yeah. But the oud gets quite fecal on me, which yeah. makes it even more interesting. I wouldn't say it's funky, but there's some there's 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 a little something hiding under there that I think uh, yeah I, <laughs> yeah, I, I it, wouldn't wait be surprised it starts if to it, ferment yeah. and come yeah. to fruition. But both good and nice, and and um, also something like when I think of Gucci and, and also Louis Vuitton, like I think of the brand aesthetic. Yeah, I don't think of this. No, absolutely like, not. This is I wouldn't have expected this from them. It's kind of earth shattering from yeah. either of these brands to come out with something like yeah. this. You like know? it's good. This stuff. is almost what you would expect from a, a huge niche brand. Yeah. Not from a luxury goods. I was gonna say both of these feel like they could be amouage or they could be that kind of a line where. But amouage had a, a much higher quality. Yes. Yeah. Even even more than that. Yeah. I, I would say I'd say the quality is apparent right away. Um, you know, like sometimes you smell a line and you go, okay, but it doesn't justify that retail price. I don't know what these sell for, but these smell like three, four hundred dollar perfumes. They they smell like they're in that range. And if you told me it was two hundred, I'd say that smells like a good deal. And if you told me it was six hundred, I'd go, okay, maybe maybe they're just sort of pushing it. But yeah, if you told me it's three, four hundred, I'd go, I think that smells like that level of quality you would expect. Right, and that's about what they go for. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got Voice of the Snake, which is Gucci's uh, oud. Okay. Smelled this? I uh, have not. Okay. 
Okay, kind of a weird opening. I'm not sure what this is. I was expecting, like, uh, Oud Essential. Like, I was just thinking, it's going to be an Oud, you know? And there's something... I don't know what this opening is. To me, it's just very smoky, black, woody, spicy, dry. I don't even know the notes. I can't pick anything out. It feels actually a little... More like an accord. Docile. Than... Yeah, this feels a little kind of lower toned. It's not quite as like big a fragrance. It, it feels a little under the radar, unless my nose is like starting to fade, but like... I get actually a bit of warmth in this, I think. Um, yeah. My first impression is I'm not really excited or intrigued or there's nothing... I, it smells fine, but I'm not really getting anything that's earth shattering yeah like those i want to keep smelling Th those two are like okay there's something going on i want to get to know them i'd like the to wear them the two incense based fragrance yeah like they, they go in different directions there's something going on there this i would sniff and go it smells dark do you see any resemblance to the other gucci like the one that you maybe they have some water yeah i've got it it's okay i'll wear just click clear your palette It's developing now. Again, I'm actually, I don't know why, but for me, um, Guerlain's Oud Essential is almost just like a straight down the middle version of Oud, which is basically a slightly smoky wood chip kind of thing. Right. And so this is, um, to me, going there. As in, um, it smells fairly competent, but just not that interesting. It's not the highest quality. Actually, it's more smoked wood, something along the lines of agar band from Hermes. Yeah. But more interesting, I find. Yeah, I, um, look, it could go somewhere. Maybe it develops into something, but at least my first impression is it smells okay. Like, it right. smells like I probably what it's meant to, but I'm not intrigued that I have to keep smelling this or want to know where this is going to go or I'd ask for the sample of it. Mm. Um, my, my impression is I, I'm sure I have something like this. Okay. You know, as in I have a lot of incense, and those two, I would, I would be curious to smell them again to see if they do something really different from what I have. So um, it, I think it smells okay, but I don't find it that interesting or exciting. I like it, surprisingly, because I wasn't crazy about it when I first got it. But the more I got to know it, it keeps me interested, and it's very ashy on me. It doesn't do anything shattering, but I think it's of a higher quality. Yeah, no, and, it's competent. Uh, I think it. I think it's. It, it smells well made. I just don't know that. At least my interests are. I'm trying to find something unique or interesting. Right. Having smelled a bunch of stuff of like, what is? Where does this go that I haven't smelled before? What is? It yeah, it, there's story? absolutely nothing new here. But it's dry. It's smoky. It's woody. It's of a higher quality. It's ashy. It's spicy. You know, it's very masculine. Yeah. But I think um, this may be part of that sort of trap of like, if you wanted to buy a Gucci. We'll ha we and you want to buy an oud? We've got an oud in our collection for you. And right. there's going to be people who are just going to buy it anyway. But I think if you're someone who's smelled a bunch of ouds, I don't think there's any oud in here. I think it's just a bunch of stuff put together that might resemble oud. Yeah, I think it's an impression of wood, kind of idea. Um, it's okay. Yeah, that's you know. Yeah, it's fine. I like it. Yeah, ombre nomad. Let's get this shot. <clears throat> I think this is one that you had mentioned before and actually made a note because I think I looked up the notes and, and thought I would like this. So I'm uh, curious to smell it now. This smells like a um, like a classic. Um, oh, oh. Don't you hate it when you you, like, you know you've smelled something before, but you just don't know where and what? But it's, I, I think totally I've said that in my video. It reminds, it reminds me of exactly so many of other rose ouds, but of a much higher quality. Yeah, well done. Like if you like rose oud, this is a very good yeah, rose oud. Yeah, very executed. Yeah. Um, I get a bit of the rose of Tom Ford's rose, like the Cafe Rose rose. Um, there's part of this that reminds me of Curtisjean's like rose oud combos. Okay. To me, it was like the closest thing that I could, I would piece it to was Rose de Arabi, but on a much higher level. Like that vanilla really aligns with oh, Rose de Arabi. I know what it is. Um, it's Armani Privé. 
Sorry, yeah. Armani Privé. Rose, yeah, sorry, Rose, Rose Darby. Darby. Sorry, I thought you were talking about some Montalo. Right? Yeah. Sorry, Rose Darby. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's exactly the one I was looking for. Yes. But, like, so much nicer. Yes, but better done. But, like you said, Rose Darby has been around for 10 years, way yeah. before anyone else yeah. has done it. That's the one. It's Rose yeah. Darby. Right. I knew, I, like, that That was the one I was looking for. Yeah. But better done. I do find, like, those Armani's, um, they're... they're pretty good but my issue is i think they're overpriced for what they are mm. and i think there's just they're missing something not in terms of right. the like the missing like, but they're just like this they final don't element that well that. there's something like the story just isn't that interesting and the performance just isn't quite good enough and they're just a little too overpriced and i feel like they sort of got a little ahead of themselves like if they made this version you'd be right. like oh that's this, impressive go seek it out this is rose that to be with a leather accord right. and like the beast mode performance yeah. What I, I'm getting like actually three things here because I'm getting like the rose and I'm getting this like leathery kind of oud support underneath it and I get like a bit of a vanilla warmth underneath yeah, it. So absolutely. I'm really getting like a nice blend of all right. three which I think is interesting because often like you'll get like ouds but they're like they're like either like honey um, like burnt sugar like super sweet oud. This is quite sweet. Or you get rosy ouds. Mm. or like but this or you got like a leather oud but this seems to actually balance all three pretty well this yeah so i think you're getting a floral leathery sweet oriental yeah, yeah. you oud. get a lot here yeah yeah like I, in one sniff you're getting three different things yeah. four different things it's deep it's got you know it's got layers to it yeah and it smells damn good this smells good and and men would wear this women would totally wear this this would smell great on a woman I, I yeah I, I agree I think this completely. smells great um, and and like I said I don't know like I don't know if this is that unique of a smell but this is I think the best version of it that I've yeah. smelled this is and when I had time. first smell I said oh it's just another rose oud and like on a blotter I'm like yeah it doesn't really inch I'm not into this kind of thing but you know wear it once wear it this you know this is this is this is really good yeah I think I think this is the the best version of this type of combo that I've smelled before. Yeah, and I would definitely, I would if you if you like the Armani or you are interested, this yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I'm impressed. Both of these lines, yeah, interesting. Like you wouldn't have thought. I mean, like Louis Vuitton is a good brand, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, like in terms of quality, of what you would expect. Yeah, it's and of a higher quality. Is a mixed range, you know what I mean? Like as in, there's there have been there's well, versions. They've of Gucci. totally shit the house the last yeah. ten years, but I think with this I think line, they're trying to come back. Yeah, I think they're under really the trying new to, creative director. Yeah, it seems like um, like Versace, right? Where like they've had these diffusion lines over the years and the designs have sort of gotten away from them and they've even Burberry too like they sort of just they're they like got third away from tier them. brands yeah right? and they became mall brands almost like now they're trying to like get back and reestablish like a certain quality um, and yeah I, I think this is a good way to do it that's uh, Tears of Iris I still can't get over these names though as much as I like the uh, scent yeah it's the names are again I think they're even like corny they're bad like uh the diors are but in a completely different way yeah okay so um iris again but different this to me is much more um powdery it's not quite as dry it's definitely not as like um i don't want to say bitter but it's not like as dewy it's not wet it's i find like, it more lipsticky this yeah. is more lipsticky than the other one and the other one's quite lipsticky yeah, and and I don't want to go like male female, but as far as the note goes, this feels like a slightly more feminine version. It's a little warmer. It's it's still dry um, and and rubbery, like almost like a like a yeah, just like a white rubber plant, you know, kind of feel. Mm. Yeah. Also, um, very nice. I think my impression is it's what's here is good, but I'm not sure that there's anything else to it. So I feel like they've done a a very good a straight. Photorealistic yeah, it's a iris. well-rounded straight line, and I, and I'm I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not you getting any greenness, spiciness. Not much. It's good, but I think the other one was more interesting. Or right off initial spray, yeah. Yeah, this is this is this is competent. It's well done. It's nice. It's interesting. I think there's or, more for me. There's more beauty to this. Yes. This is this is this is beautiful. The other one, the other one's is, a little bit more exciting and exactly, you know. But this is like this, this is, is breathtaking for me. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. I think this is this is um, how do I put it? This is like a young, fresh-faced, dewy, you know, like white dress kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's it's a it's a it's a um, 
I almost want to cr- like when I wear this, I was like, it maybe it's called Tears of Iris because I want to cry like just how it feels. You can feel the yeah, beauty it feels to something it. exactly. It's like, wow, it feels like something where you can see the beauty of the flower, and there's nothing to distract. It's just like right straight the, up iris. Yeah, but it feels. Um, um, I don't want to say like when I think of Chanel's, often I think of them as like elegant or restrained or whatever they, they feel whereas this is almost like uplifting it's like they're showcasing right I feel like they're showcasing this flower they've got the show. spotlight on the iris exactly exactly and it's like nothing else is distracting it's just that thing and it's like a spotlight that's on it and everything else is dark and it's just like this is what we're doing now yeah i get the powderiness i get lipstick i get a little bit of earthiness you know uh, a little bit of greenness and then the creaminess comes out in the base with that sandalwood. Yeah. I don't think this is pushing it in any direction. When I smell Iris Silver Mist or Iris or um, the other one, they, they seem to be pushing it in a direction. This doesn't. This seems yeah. to be nothing is distracting from the Iris. Yeah. Nice. Good. Yeah. And Nouveau Monde from uh, Louis Vuitton. Yeah. I think this was also on the list of um, sounded, sounded interesting, sounded promising. Are you getting stuffy? Perhaps. Um, my first impression is like cognac or something, or like um, I'm getting like a sharpness of like a boozy. Um, oh, tequila, um, agave, like um, aged tequila, mezcal. Interesting. Okay, interesting creation because like this is not. This does smell like a travel, like a like a dusty road with a spice route, and it, it totally does. Um, Not something you would expect from Louis Vuitton, is it? Well, but in a way, yes, because Louis Vuitton is like the trunk, like the steamer trunk is their history. This smells the like an old. Bag. This is the traveled bag. This is the like leather bag that's gone through the spice market. I get a lot of salty sun. leather from that. Totally, and the, yeah. it gets turns animalic like. I get actually a hint because you said salty and I do get a hint of that like Eau de Marvay, like that ombre gris saltiness. Yeah. And like there's some smoke, but it's not a smoky fragrance yet. It's just like a it's like a slightly smoked jacket. Like mm-hmm. there's the leather, there's yeah, the I get bag, that. there's spices. This to me smells so um I don't want to say rich, but it smells like a rich person. It is, yeah. It smells like yeah. someone who's wearing it, like who has an expensive right. Louis Vuitton bag. Right. It's mm-hmm. almost like an updated Fahrenheit, even though it doesn't smell like Fahrenheit, yeah. you know? This, this, yeah, to me, this is like, I feel like you've got to be like 30, 40 plus to wear this. This is a mature, like, and it's not, it's not heavy and it's not rich and it doesn't feel like it's going to be too loud, but I feel like this is a like wealthy gentleman. Like this is like, it's a different take. Like Tuscan leather has a sort of bowler kind of status feel to it, but it's aggressive and it's sharp and it's a young guy with a leather jacket and slick hair and like a fast car. This is a guy who's driving like, like, you know, who has like the Rolls Royce or something and he steps out and he just smells like money and power. Totally. Like, yeah, I, well, yeah. So to me, I feel like they've taken Nouveau Monde and used it as the base for Ombre Nomad. Yeah, so I was actually going to say, I, I feel like this, they're different fragrances, but it feels like a house sort of, not aesthetic, but but there's some, yeah, there's so some So they've just taken here. Nouveau Monde and added yeah. rose, oud, and a ton of vanilla, yeah. and that's what this is. Yeah. So there's a lot of similarities between these two. I remember smelling the line at one point. This and is I much simpler. Yeah. It's simpler, but it's very good. It's 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 simple, but it's like still excellent on its own. This to me could become like I don't know if Louis Vuitton is going to become a classic, meaning it's not something that every guy is going to own. But if this was something that was like a accessible mainstream designer scent, this would be the kind of thing the guys would be wearing for the next twenty years, and it'd be like this is like English leather, you know, like it's except it's like the Louis Vuitton version of it, but it smells like yeah. It's money and it's power, but it's not aggressive. This is a guy who's no, so wealthy that he doesn't need to show off to you. He just has it's expensive stuff. It's got some stuff. kind of softness, some elegance yeah. to it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call this, um, again, not to do the whole gender thing, but like I, I wouldn't picture this on, on a woman. I wouldn't picture it. As much as I love this, smell this on a woman, this is, to me, traditionally masculine. Yeah, to me, this is a classic. Ma- and I don't think there's like a ton of like overt spices. Yeah. It's almost some kind of petrol vibe in here. Yeah, yeah, because you were saying It's like not Fahrenheit. gasoline, but yeah, maybe that's my yeah. Associ- yeah. association. I just, I picture, I, and this isn't like, 
the guy who necessarily owns like racing car it's like a guy who owns a racing team you know what i mean like yeah. it's not the guy like like tuscan leather's he's the, guy the money who, behind tuscan the team, leather's right? the guy who has the race car right, and like right. he drives the lambo this is the guy who this owns is the, the investor team. right right like he, he smells like money and power and wealth but like so much yeah. so that it's not that loud he doesn't need to be this loud. guy will do like a walk through the shop right. where and they're fixing like, the cars up yeah and everyone's like who is that guy yeah. and they're like oh head yeah. keep your head down and, and get yeah. back to work right yeah. look busy yeah i'm impressed um yeah yeah okay so we've got two left we've got the moon and the night which one you want to hit? Right. Let's start with um, the night because I think the moon's going to be a big one. They're um, actually both are really big. Bold. Now, yeah. So this collection, there originally it was the moon, right? Or sorry, the night. So the night, which was sort of based off Portrait of a Lady, uh, an oud rose kind of thing with with actual oud. I think it was like also like nine hundred thousand dollars. It was a big one. And then since then, there's I... promise. Promise, dawn, dawn, and the moon. And the moon. So there's now four in that four, collection? yeah. We're not missing one. No, that's that's it, four. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, was Promise the one that goes, like, this has the Cypriol oil. It goes that's much right. greener, right? Right, like, right, right. They almost all seem like they're takes on Portrait of a Lady. Or Portrait of a Lady spiced up. Yeah, like, but in different sort of directions. Yeah. Like, my recollection is, like, the night was, like, Portrait plus an oud on top. Whereas like the moon was like a little more fruity and sweet, and I think it, the moon really went the most different direction from yeah. portrait than the rest of these. Most of these kind of like when I smell this, I can sense portrait like yeah. deep in the base, At but its core. they're completely different, right? Yeah, yeah. And also these, um, I mean, like look, they they're all kind of rose patches, rose patchouli, which yeah. is what portrait of a lady is. Yeah. And, and actually, like, just in a way, you know, if I think of, like, florals, like, rose and rose and um, oud is a fairly classic combo, but it almost seems weird to me now, now that I think about it, is just, like, rose, when I've smelled rose on its own, is such a delicate floral. Like, there's green rose, and there's powdery yeah, rose, there's and so many rose, different but ways. rose is usually a very um, soft floral. So I'm almost surprised that someone initially would have taken it and taken this heavy oud and said, let's balance it with this like delicate little rose. Like if you took some other floral that was a little heavier or richer or something, I'm surprised that that's like the classic combo because I, I would never have thought to put them together. But I guess that they've been doing it for ages. But, but um, you know, because roses, I've known it is always such a delicate floral. Right. But but yeah, so it seems to be a common sort of base theme. Well, here. it's something they've been doing in the Middle East for ages, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. But it's just funny. Kind of where all know. these came from or originated yeah you know it's it's kind of came over into the western world yeah and that's actually a, a sort of a, a a comment that gets um pulled out a lot which is you know sometimes is this a western oud is this a, a classic or traditional oud there's you know? nothing western about this i think yeah. they went as you know as close to uh the middle east as as you possibly can Whew. um I think also actually yeah so I think there's a lot of I, I think there's an emerging market with Russia and um, like well new wealth if you will and uh, and the Middle East and I think we're seeing lines starting to do specific fragrances that are either exclusives for the region or they're initially launches for there and then they launch them or things like this where they'll have it at the boutiques but they don't necessarily expect to sell that many they they know that there are people who will smell this and they don't really care what the price is they just want excellent juice and in a way, that's part of Frederick Mell's idea is like, we don't work back from price points. Mm. We just make it and then we figure out what it's going right. to cost. So yeah. let's make it the way we want Total it to. Total creative freedom. Exactly. Exactly. And and, and you, you, this may not have worked commercially in North America, considering the price point. But I think in the Middle East, where the price tolerance is different and they're fragrance literate, they would know how good this is. And they, if they're shopping for perfume, they'll have the money to buy it. They'll buy it. And it's... Wah, woof, yeah. Okay, so... It is. I get a huge blast of oh, fermentation. Of yeah, it's raunchy. Like it's it's um it's funky. It's like you open your fridge and the cheese drawer is like yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of blue cheese. But 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 like a high quality. But beautiful and delicious. <laughs> yeah. But like in the disgusting most possible in a way. like. It's it's hard to explain because I think like people think of like. You know, when I like, if you're in this kind of thing or you're in like wine, right? You'll be like, oh, I smell notes of rotten cherry or something. Like, if you know, or we'll talk about like urinous notes. And right. like, I don't mean that's bad. I just no. mean it smells like sweet and sticky and urinous. It's a and reference. It's just a reference of the thing. So some people will be like, oh, it smells like pickle juice. And like, and we don't get hung up on like 
that smell being good or bad. I think we're just scent explorers. It's, it's, so yeah, we're just interested reference. in smelling. Could you make a smell like How else would you sir? describe to, to yeah. translate to the viewers other than pickles? Yeah, and in the same way as like blue cheese is technically like rotten and stinks but there's but something people eat it right yeah there's something appealing about it and so it's sort of like do you inherently like the taste or it's are you seeking taste. a but i think it's because you don't actually like the taste i think you're seeking a novel experience i think what you're seeking is something you've never tasted before something that's unusual or interesting and you can just about tolerate right the thing and like it's not something that much, you would eat much. every single day and just exactly. like this to me this is a christmas day scent maybe easter scent yeah you know it's it's yeah. not even once a this week. This should or not once... be your like signature everyday Absolutely scent. Absolutely not. Too much. No, it's, it's overbearing. Too it's overpowering. Yeah. But it's got this beauty to it. Yeah, and I've always contended that actually Portrait of a Lady, even on its own as it is, is a big fragrance. It's a like whenever when I worked at the store and people would come and smell it, I would say, look, if you're gonna wear, it's like black orchid. Like if you're gonna wear this thing, you need to be committed to it because mm. it will not take like. It wears, prisoners. You. it wears you it's a big fragrance for a big personality so like if you're wearing it for the night and you're the big personality that night like you better wear the red own, dress own with this it. one yeah you got because like it. this is the thing this is not for the shy person this is when like yeah it's 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 got a big presence so portrait of a lady always had that yeah this is rich and full and i think my impression when i first when i smelled i smelled this years ago when it first launched i was at a frederick mal boutique uh in in manhattan like near uh, oswald there and i popped in and i was like do you guys have this night thing i've heard and i smelled it and i was like whoa like, wow that is and i was like oh can i can i get a sample of that and they're like no <laughs> they're like, who, who are you yeah they're like no we don't make samples you can smell it and if you'd like to buy it it's 900 dollars. <laughs> otherwise <laughs> there's the door it's quite heavy um which it is and um yeah, but I think I sprayed it on my hand and like I, uh, yeah, um, I wasn't popular that day with the family. But um, yeah, my impression is it is Portrait of a Lady, but it's it's much richer, much fuller. There's a, he's taken the oud and really pulled it right through the Portrait of a Lady and, and, and filled it out and it sits on top. I think my impression at the time was I would just take Portrait of a Lady for half the price, um, but it's, 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 it's good, it's well done. And again, I would say maybe a bit of the same critique of like for the time, meaning when this came out and it was, ooh, natural oud, ooh, a eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars dollar perfume, ooh, that was all yeah. somewhat unique. But now, like, there are several of those out and there's a taste for it and there's a tolerance Well, now there's for artisanal it. brands that I think that are competing with this, but I think this... I could be wrong. I think this came out way before the artisanal... That's what I'm saying. As in, when I smell this... I'm not that impressed in terms of I don't think I think this is a very good natural oud rose and I'm not saying it's all natural oud it's it's clearly a compilation but it's very good but I think this was a benchmark in terms of yeah. a certain level of quality a certain level of let's call the natural ingredients and a t and a tester of will consumers pay these prices in North America for perfume whereas yeah, now you know point. and like Roja was the only guy charging that kind of stuff like you wouldn't find stuff six seven eight hundred dollar plus I, I don't like there was jar like joel rosenstein right, right. or something i smelled his something i think he's only at bergdorf or... yeah yeah um and i sniffed his stuff at, at bergdorf's and yeah, it's a whole you, experience you can only smell it by an appointment yeah it was a whole thing the guy sat there and showed us the thing he wouldn't talk about notes he wouldn't talk about prices unless you were actually going to buy it um so you know there, there just wasn't stuff and i was shocked to see a six hundred dollar perfume but i think this was a entry into that so is it good and competent totally um have things become more interesting than this yeah so if you love classic rose oud and you want good quality this is good but if you want like the moon is much more interesting like that'll go but yeah somewhere. I, I would agree yeah too. so this is this is very good work no doubt about it the moon probably isn't as beautiful but it yeah. it is more exciting this is this is rich and full and yeah. you know i always said to people when i was like when people were coming to smell frederick Mall's line and they would smell portrait of a lady um I would say to them, look, you've smelled a three-piece band version of this kind of idea before. This is the orchestra. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. When you smell Portrait of a Lady, it the is the orchestra ensemble. and harmony. It's it's everyone together. And these guys are master perfumers who are doing them, who are really flexing their muscle and really showing what perfume can be, um, which is why I'm also a big fan of the line, even though I don't own very many of them or even necessarily like that many of them. I think it's a, it's a great example of a line that is really – pushing the bounds of what perfume is meant to be and can be um and it's just a different way of, of going about it so i think it's an important line 
And this fragrance, I think, is important, not necessarily because of the smell, but because... Because it started something. Exactly. Yeah. The price point, the quality of the ingredients, um, you know, that, that sort of idea. And maybe, in a way, was, was one of the ones that pushed rose, oud, oud fragrances in a Western, sorry, in an eastern -y kind of way into the Western world and palate mm. and sort of tested the grounds for it. Right. So, yeah, once so, you smell this... So they've everything. released four... In, you know, in very short number of years, do you think he's done with this Eastern idea? Or do you I would think assume we'll see that's more? the collection. I mean, truth be told, I'm not sure if Oud is on its way out at this point. I, don't, I think, I think it's now a, a, a genre on its own that's here to stay, yeah. just like Orientals. Right, I agree with you there. Uh, I, think, I, think it is, I, think there's I think if you've seen enough of what's out there, they're not just it's, copycats. This isn't it is just the category. trend. Yeah. Because it's a genre on its own in the Middle East, and it's been that way for yeah. probably thousands of years. Yeah. So, so I guess okay. So maybe it is just more kind than of just a trend. Yeah. Adopted it from the Middle East, and now. Yeah. yeah so that could be. So maybe part of the as Western. opposed to, I I initially sort of saw it as a trend where we were starting with naturals. We got in some synthetics, and then um, and basically once it filtered from high end lines where it was like Tom Ford, and then it was these guys, and, and eventually it was John Barbados doing oud and Polo doing oud. At that point, you're like okay now we're six seven years into the trend who's you know the guys at the top are pushing the bounds somewhere else now um and look in part you know and, and we've discussed this before sometimes it actually just depends on aroma chemicals it just depends on what's available and what's interesting so oud was always great but now there's a couple of synthetics so everyone can get oud so there may just be some breakthrough in some new interesting molecule like calone or you know whatever where it'll suddenly start getting released and it'll start the next trend and right now I'm not really sure where we're at. We seem right. to be doing a bit of spice and wood, but then there's some a lot of florals coming out. I'm not really sure kind of where the industry is at, but I think I think it'll just take a new breakthrough, and then we'll shift suddenly in that direction. And ten years from now, you know, it'll probably be a lot better. The, the oud will be a lot oh, better yeah. than what we're seeing today. Well, with hopefully, technology, the advancements, and exactly because it's not going to be natural. Like if anything, that stuff is getting progressively right. Like look harder. at the first, you know, the first take on oud, which was oud wood which I don't think is a very great fragrance or a it's great okay. take yeah. on oud. Yeah. Um, but look what they're releasing today. You know, I, it just, there's yeah. no comparison. I, exactly. And that's, you know, from technology advancing. So 10 years from today, we'll, we're going to be, we're going to be seeing a lot more interesting things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued to see where it's going next. Yeah. Okay. we got one. We got more. one left. Um, okay. So the moon, I smelled it once. I'll tell you, my, I'll tell you my impression. And I wore it once. Actually, my girlfriend wore it too. Um, yeah. Um, you, oh, you said, you told, um, you told a story of this where like you said someone could smell it in the bathroom. <laughs> they said you were in the bathroom or something. And someone's like, I know Eugene's, somebody, Eugene's been in here. Somebody was in the house, yeah. you know, and uh, they're like, I know you're here. Okay. So where, where the night is like a classic rose Full, oud fresh. and it's and it's powdery and it's a little rich and there is a bit of raunch in there too this to me is even oof wow okay it's even sharper but it's like there's a sweet juicy berry i think yeah, it's like red currants or something I think or it's raspberry yeah okay but it's that kind of like um sour berry sure um i definitely get a sour berry but this is way more funky now it's not really like Oh, I got so much like fun. dirty animalic. Okay, so when I first smelled this, what I said to the guy was, "This smells like sex <sighs> sweat. Like it smells like a sour, acidic sort of um, human." Yeah, sweat. there's a lot of cumin, like a dry, leathery cumin. Yeah. So I definitely get sex sweat. Like, okay. a, a, do you know what I mean? There's something about that that's like kind of. It's 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 a bit of the funk and the dry cumin thing, yeah. but there's also like maybe it's the berries, but I'm getting like a definite like sour juicy berryness in it, and so to me, yeah, this is definitely the it's furthest smoked raspberry. It's like almost like uh, shisha, or, yeah. or what they yeah. smoke in the Middle East. It's that um, raspberry scented smoke. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Totally, totally. But there's also some funk in here, and it's and and um. Again, like the language escapes me because like when we say fresh and it means 10 things, when I say funky, I don't mean like creamy, fatty civet of Jiki. Mm. That's funky, but it's not the same. Mm. This is funky in a like dry body odor-ish. Okay, yeah, of, I definitely see that with the but, cumin. But not, in a, but not in an unattractive way. Although I, I think someone could smell this and say, ew, you stink. Like I think if someone didn't know what they were smelling, 
I think it could smell stinky. And, and, and that's sort of like, then I question like the wearability of it. Yeah. Like I think if you go easy on the trigger, I think if you go really light. You don't need much of either of yeah, these. Yeah, I think know? if you go really light, it's like intriguing and yeah. interesting. And yeah. someone would be like, what is that? Yeah. I want to smell that. But I think if you went heavy, someone would be like, oh, you reek. What is that? Like you stink. You smell like you put some, yeah. you know, car freshener all over you. Like what is that thing? Yeah, yeah. To me, it's very explosive and much more interesting than the rest of the range. Yes. There's I, something I about it. And it doesn't smell as natural. I definitely get the synthetics from here. Yeah. You know, it doesn't smell cheap synthetic. But interesting. Yeah. But I know there's a, a, a higher dose of synthetics in here. I yeah. can just sense them and feel them. I think when you smell the night, you're getting a beautiful composure, you know, comp uh, composition of, you know, rose and oud. And you're really appreciating the quality of the rose and the oud. And there's like maybe a little hint of funk in there yeah. or whatever. Yeah. This is is a story i don't know yeah. what the story is but I, I i wrote a review which i don't write ever write reviews and i jumped on for granted and i'm like i have to write about this because it's very unusual i don't know what the hell's going on but it feels like a roller coaster of, of things totally. where there's, there's yeah. sweet and there's sour and then there's spunk and there's yeah. this and it and there was like a moment of i got like this blue cheesy thing going on and like i just yeah it was like a rush for the first half an hour to an hour of like i don't know where this thing's going but it's exciting so i, I it is very exciting it, it seems like a much more like where where the moon is like portrait of a lady it's this beautiful voluptuous curvy rich sumptuous thing this is like you know jazz beats this is like yeah, a drum like solo almost like, like a technique uh, fire show yeah, or something this thing it's alive and it's moving and it's jumping and it's, it's a lot like, of contrast yeah. and colors and... and i think my conclusion to the review was basically to say I'm not sure what this is. I don't even know if I want to smell like it, but it's it's a ride. It's a roller coaster, and it's exciting, and like it's worth sniffing out just to go on that ride, just just to yeah, absolutely experience that. So I'm I'm sort of like heat and hot about. I think I end up like getting a sample of it, but it's something I think I'll just sniff from time to time. It's just a fascinating experience. Um, but it's it's interesting, and again, I, you couldn't have this as a signature scent. I don't know. You couldn't wear this not. daily. This is you know, on a special event or occasion. Yeah. I wear it to work because yeah, yeah. I guess it, you just you have know, a rotation. And you there's twenty thousand square feet yeah. that I can fill. You know, yeah. so and this will fill a room. I think, I think if you're wearing this at an event, and I can't imagine like radiating, like being hot and radiating this thing. Yeah, this everyone will know. You're this there. is like a December to February scent only. Like when it is minus twenty out, yeah. it is snowing. It is blistery cold. This isn't for even April weather. You know yeah. when it's starting to get mild it's and the snow warm. starting to now. But also, it's a Middle Eastern thing. Like imagine I, I, being I can't dressed even in fathom. black and dousing yourself. Like, yeah, this will fill a room. Um, but but it, yeah, it's a little more sharp and jagged compared to say Portrait of the Night or, or um, yeah, the, the Night because the Night seems curvy and warm and voluptuous and and this is a little yeah. And it's also half the price of all those others. Oh yeah, okay. Right. And um, you know, in all my years of perfumery, I've never gotten so much attention yeah. as from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think like something like you know the Night is like wow, that's beautiful. What is that? Whereas that is like. Well, what is that smell? Like, yeah. what is that? Like, yeah. half, of it, I, half of it is just like, what is that smell? Right. Of just, I don't know, what, what am I smelling right now? I've had people chase me down, hunt yeah. me. Yeah. And they're like, you're the totally. guy. What is that? And yes. then they Google it and they're like, they yeah. see the price and they're like, the phones go yeah. away, right? But, but like, but, 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 um, the, the night is discernible of what it is. I think it's a beautiful rose and oud, meaning it's like a beautiful composition. You would smell it and go, wow, that's an amazing aroma smell. Mm. This is like half of the attention is just, what is that? I don't right. know. So I think it's just, it's, it's fascinating and interesting. Yeah. And there's oud um, in here too, but it's not forefront like the others. Yeah. This is like more on the back burner, yeah. right? Yeah. It, this is not it's, a showcase of oud. No. No. It's more sweet, smoky, raspberry leather spices yeah. yeah and in a way you know like i kind of have two uh, two ideas on like niche what is niche right and sometimes to me niche is like i'm telling you a story and i'm going in a certain direction and if you like that story and you like where we're going with it then like come on this journey adventure with us and buy the bottle and come take the journey over and over again and occasionally you'll find a new few characters and sometimes you get niche where it's like it's an interesting smell and you're not even sure what it is like right. Where it's like you said, um, I, I think uh, Krista was talking about like a uh, Comedy Scone 2 man or something. And it smells like a burnt out candle. And it's like stuff like this where you're like, I didn't know I could smell like that. Like I didn't, like it was like me and Philosophos where I was like, 
it smells like you're climbed a tree and you ate a fig but i didn't know that someone would make that combination of smells right. and i would want to smell like that story like right. i didn't know that could happen i just yeah, thought it's abstract art right yeah so it's a bit like um like christopher brosius like cv i hate perfume and his whole line is based on the idea of like why do you want to smell like a perfume like i guess if we're just making things up then you could smell like anything and so he'll make smells of things because who cares you're, you're not a flower anyway right so if you're gonna smell like a rose you might as well smell like leather chair and he'll make a leather chair fragrance like sure might as well be that or he has one called like roast beef dinner and it smells like roast <laughs> do you know what I mean? he's like fuck it like let's just you know like roast make smells beef dinner. like it, that actually you know? sounds like disgusting yeah roast but beef. fascinating to smell right. you'd be like i'd be curious to see if someone could make that and he's very good at making those like unique interesting it's a smells. great concept it's not very functional yeah. though right no no totally like i i, I, I wouldn't a want to wine. smell like roast beef dinner yeah. even though yeah you know so he actually i believe did most of the demeter fragrances and in which case it makes sense it's like you know birthday cake or like right. tootsie roll or wet cement and, and so but there's gonna be someone who wants to smell like wet dirt yeah. And they'll be like, oh, finally, a wet dirt fragrance. But right. most people are like, eh, I don't, you know, I just want to smell like Eau de Cologne. Yeah. So anyway, I think this is like, this is not a classic fragrance. I'm not sure no. what it is, but it's interesting. And so that to me is a version of what niche is, which it's, is, it's a smell you want to smell, even though you're not really sure what it's actually, what the story is or when you would wear it. But It's so big and bold and powerful. I almost feel like it's three fragrances in one. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. got so much presence it doesn't to feel it. unbalanced like no absolutely like, uh, small not. ones where i'm like okay this almost feels like two or three accords that just didn't mash together well yeah. th this is it's it's well put together i just i guess my criticism if you will is i just don't know actually what it's just it like is. too much i don't right. know what it is and when i'd wear it right but i just find it fascinating right. and interesting yeah. so it's niche in that kind of a way that it's not a smell you'll ever get it's totally uh, you know a, a full composition but i just don't quite know what the story is that's telling me but yeah. it's cool and interesting and exciting. I love it, I, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I love wearing it. I love, you know, experiencing it and, you know, the couple yeah. of times a year that I yeah. get to take it. Yeah, and I it. love smelling a sample of it. And, and that's probably as far as I'll go with it. <laughs> so, yeah, great uh, great lineup. And a good mix. Like, we did some... Any favorites? Um, Anything that stood out? Uh, Lillian, I'm definitely going to pursue that further. Uh, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. The Gucci line and the um, that um, Nouveau Monde, actually. I think that that really could be... Like, if you were going to pare down a collection like mine, or you were going to really say, okay, I want classics or things I can wear for the next 20 years, I think that Nouveau Monde is, is excellent. Um, yeah, and Santal Noir is pretty good. Yeah, the Iris is... I, I, I just love Iris, although the Caroline is very good. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, good stuff. Interesting stuff. Um, and I like, you know, this is a great way to do it because it's like you've gone through the search and found the good stuff already. And then within the lines, you've pulled stuff that's interesting. So I like exploring in this. Sort I've of way. talked about all these before, but I'm happy yeah. to talk about them again to bring these things back to the surface. Because, you know, yeah. you come over and maybe you can point something out that I haven't been able yeah, to see. Connections between things or a certain Absolutely. impression or idea. Yeah. I, I tend to focus on sort of textures and colors. Yeah. It's just sort of it feels like a natural way for me to sort of... Um, experience it um you know we, we talk about notes and ingredients and stuff but really half of what's in there is not what's on the label and half of what's on the label is not really what's in there um and they don't tell you the proportions so they may just put rose because rose is popular but they don't say how much rose it's like a, it's like a, there's no ingredient like ingredient list right. with no measurements yeah. so I, I don't really bother too much with that i just sort of smell it and do i like it and also i think um, an interesting outcome of this kind of idea is I think you and I can appreciate the artistry of what the thing is or critique the artistry of what it is, mm. but that's completely separate from what we actually like and wear. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I yeah. think the moon is exciting, but I don't really know that I'm going to wear it particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. And then I can say Oud Rosewood, I'm disappointed with. I think it's not, you know, it's, the quality of what's there is fine, yeah. but it's just, I agree. A, it's, half a, it's half a fragrance. And, and I think I find it just really boring and yeah, uninteresting. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little like, not annoyed, but like I'm surprised that they would release that. You know, to it's almost like they them. rushed it out and, and just kind of marketed the name. The, the name is kind of catchy, you know. Oud it Rosewood. feels like a name that they made a fragrance for, and then they just didn't bother. Yeah, they had the name it. first, and they're yeah. like, yeah, let's throw this out yeah. there. Yeah, cool, great, uh, great setup. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad that you came and we got to do this. I hope you guys will give Daniel a, a nice, warm welcome and uh, um, ask him to come back. Hopefully, we'll see him uh, in future videos. Cool, exciting. All right, thanks for coming, cool. and we'll Thank see you all again soon. <laughs>